Hey guys, can you see me? If you can, uh, type something in there. We've been having some technical difficulties. We've been having some technical difficulties. Everybody make it over? There they go. I think they made it over. Okay, well, I can't see anything on this end. Can you see the uh, comment section? Um, yeah, okay. So you guys can see me. I'm having to do this on my telephone because for some reason the computer will not work. So I have to work off of a mini screen. So anyway, guys, um, welcome. And I can't see all these because everything is so small. But uh, like I said, welcome. And we just want to say, first of all, thank you guys, each and every one of you for all your support. Because um, if it wasn't, you know, for you all, then we wouldn't be where we're at. And I've got my son right here. This is on my iPad. So he's uh, down in Texas. And they wanted quite a bit of money to do, um, to integrate, to, to be able to pull him in. So we just decided to go ahead and um, FaceTime him over my iPad. That way I just kind of hold him up right here from time to time and, and keep him online. So anyway, uh, I did have a question on um, that backpack that we gave away. I did find it's called a Super Sun Military Tactical Backpack. So whoever was asking about that, that is the name of it. Um, and also, you know, we were thinking that if you guys want to uh, find out the latest of the information, we're going to try to start uh, sending out some mass emails, you know, maybe once or twice a month and let you guys know, you know, what's going on here. And that's a good way that we can get a hold of you, you know, if we decide to do a live stream or something like that, because sometimes my videos are two weeks in advance. Now, you may not know that, but I have to keep filming uh, that way in order to bring those to you guys because of my really busy schedule. So um, I just want to let you know that that would be a good way that we could actually, um, you know, get some information out there to everybody. And... Uh, I'm going to shut up a minute and let Patrick say hello. Wait a minute. Can't hear you. You got mute on? You can't hear me now? Now we hear, hear you. Now. Yeah, okay. I said, hey, guys, what's going on? I'm just looking at the comment section here. Uh, that way I can respond back since he's got it. he's on his phone. I'll be able to type back. Uh, so... Uh, just in case anybody asks any questions or anything, if he's in the middle of talking, I'll be able to respond, uh, hopefully. Um, but, uh, yes, thank you guys, all 31 of you. All right, our first one. <laughs> can you guys hear him on the iPad? If you can, give a thumbs up or something like that. Hey, Deidre. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, so that's pretty cool. So, um... You know, I've also had some questions that uh, people have asked about the cabin. When am I going to get back to the cabin? Well, I just want to let you guys know that I'm pretty much by myself. And the way my schedule is, I work 24-hour shifts. Hey, John, what's up? Um, so if I volunteer to work in Gatlinburg, that's a 48-hour shift. So then I would get off from there and I would go out and um, if it's my day to teach that week, because I do teach at the college one day, then whenever I am off and have some spare time, then I go out there and that's what I'm doing. So um, currently I had been milling lumber for floor joists and siding and stuff like that. 
but I can't video that all the time and bring that to you guys because that would be kind of really boring. And so what I decided to do was start that outdoor kitchen. That way I can kind of flip flop back and forth. And as time, you know, my priorities dictate, then I can always bring something where it kind of looks like I'm being productive instead of uh, just repetitive going back and forth, back and forth. So that was the reason for the many projects. And, and I will tell you too, that sometimes mentally it's a, it's a nice, nice break to be able to get away from, um, you know, running back and forth in that one little aisle in the sawmill and, uh, jumping out there in the woods and doing something else. So that's what, um, I'm currently working on. Um, and we also got something, you might have seen a post on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. If you're not following us there and you want to, um, you know, you can check us out there. But we had asked about what did you like? Did you like your coffee ground or did you like it in the bean? And we actually met um, a local guy who has built uh, a homestead, he and his wife, off-grid. They're from up north. And they actually um, had dabbled into the coffee business, but now that's pretty much their livelihood. And so I happened to run into him, and he's working us up uh, some coffee. Uh, different. Um, we asked him to do two or three different types of blends. The coffee company that we had, it just wasn't working out because it was going to be astronomical to try to get the shipping with people when they order it. So, um, hey, Carl. Anyway, um, so since this guy is local, you know, it would only be one shipping. And we're trying to work it out to where when you click on the link, if it's something, if you like specialty coffees, then you can actually click on our link. It would take you to his and you can make the order and then he would ship it out there. And we don't have, you know, double shipping. We don't have delay in getting it here and then reshipping it out. So anyway, we hope that's going to work out for people that like that because I certainly like it. And that was one of the main reasons that I contacted him to try to find somebody that could mix a good coffee blend for me. Anyway, uh, so Patrick. We have a question. Yeah, what is it? Do you have an idea? Mar Marvin V says, do you have an, any idea when you want to finish your cabin? Marvin, I was just saying, if you if you came on a little bit late, that honestly, I'm not in any big hurry to finish the cabin because I have a home here. Um, I was going to try to get out there this fall, and it may work out that way. But I'm not um, I'm not in a rush to try to get that done, and I, you know, am working on it. You know, honestly, as fast as I can go. Because pretty much, if you all have been following, everything is coming off of the property. I'm actually, um, you know, milling lumber off of the property. I've, I've the, the garden that I planted, you know, the dirt came from the property. I've got um, a lot of resources out there. So I'm cutting tuba tins and cutting siding. I've been waiting to fall some trees. Um but we've had about three weeks of sustained, fairly substantial winds. And so I felt that it was kind of dangerous to try to fall some trees there so that I could continue milling. So that's re another reason that I started that outdoor kitchen so that I could go ahead and, um, you know, have a project that I could be working on. So those were actually going to fall downhill anyway. I just needed to put a cable on them and kind of direct them in the, the way that I needed them to go because they would have probably fallen on some structures that I had up there. Those pines, they're really bad for blowing over and the cedars especially too because they don't have a really good root system. How is the garden doing seeing that we're two weeks behind? It's actually doing great. To let you all know, and I really appreciate all of your comments, you know, I had no idea that I was adding a bunch of carbon-based material that was going to suck the nitrogen out of the soil. My primary goal was to try to loosen the soil up so that the plants might grow better. Um, so what I did was, is my daughter and I, we took uh, a big scoop. I took the tractor and took a big scoop out of each one of them. 
and I went back down in the hollow. I got some fresh black dirt and what is that? Put a remote camera on your property out there and have a run by battery. <laughs> anyway, I uh, took some black dirt, put it back in there because the plants at that time had only been in there about a week and they still had the pod on the bottom. So we replanted them and they are really green. So you'll be seeing in some upcoming videos, they're really looking good. Um, we have two questions so far. Uh, well, we have several. Uh, two questions about solar. Do you have any plans on solar or uh, putting a well in? Well. That's uh, from Lourdes and then Boondocking. Uh, they both asked about solar. Okay. So, solar. I have talked with my supervisor at work. Uh, he's also an electrical contractor. Um, he's dabbled in both all the years that he's been a medic, I guess, uh, which is probably 35 years going on now. But um, I had asked him about the solar, and he said, now, I don't know, some of you guys that may have experience in this, but he told me that, um, he said it's good, it's nice to have, especially when the power goes out. He said, but he, it was just his opinion that you really could not recoup the investment that it would take to run a house that size. Now, he said, I would really have to sit down and figure up how many watts that I would be needing to use on a daily basis, what would be constantly running, and just what my needs would be to determine what size, um, you know, system that I need. So I'm still checking into that. I think that what I may do is I may go ahead and get some solar like for the sawmill so I don't have to run wires out there. I may get one for that little shed that I've got. I'm also looking at uh, this outdoor forest kitchen that I'm going to build um, where I may add like a fan or something. So there may be a few panels stuck up here and there, but I honestly, you know, I know at some point... Um, that later on in years, I won't be able to get around and do a lot of things. And my original intention was to go ahead and put a septic tank in, go ahead and have power run up there, even though I may not use it. Hey, Rob. Um, so, you know, it would always be there. And, and the same thing, too. You know, I plan on making all my doorways three feet um or 36 inches that way i can get a wheelchair in and out in the event that i ever ended up that way so you know i'm trying to plan for the future because i know that i won't be able to outwork my son uh forever i can still do it right now but i don't know if i'll be able to outrun him for or outwork him forever <laughs> so um let's see here we had another question uh, uh DP asked, what branch of the military are you from? Honestly, DP, um, I have not been in the military. I did want to go to the Air Force Academy, but I got married uh, very young. I will tell you this, that I did teach martial arts for 28 years, and it's very akin to the same atmosphere that the military is, you know, because that's the reason they call it martial or military arts. Um and I was very fortunate to have uh, two Korean instructors. One uh, was my, uh, they call it gumdo, which is a sword art. And then the other was kickboxing. I was very fortunate to have both those guys on my side. And I did teach Olympic kickboxing for probably 12 years out of the 28 that I did it. Um, but, you know, I would have probably done well in the military if I'd have been in there, but... I wasn't, so, you know, I used to wear a crew cut, and people would ask me, you know, what branch of the military I was from, but I didn't. Um, now, I did notice that there were some comments on some recent videos that people were asking about how do you keep up your, uh, your equipment, like your axes and your knives, how do you keep them sharp, uh, how do you take care of them, um, and, and so on and so forth, so... Um, you know, some people maybe that are in here who, who uh, are new to it or, uh, you know, I know you did a video on protecting your bit, like making sure that you keep that leather, um, uh, what do you want to call it? Uh, what do you call it? Like, a, it's like a sheet for your knife. 
but you put your you put it on your axe, whatever it's called. A guard. Yeah, that thing. The okay. Guard. Well, first of all, people are. Hey, Scott. People are um, still talking about belts. You know, you guys, if you have children, I would highly suggest putting them into martial arts, especially if you can find a good teacher, because it will teach them uh, an indomitable type spirit. It will teach them discipline. It'll teach them motivation. And there's a lot of attributes that come along from it that they don't pick up uh, firsthand. And, you know, most people, they want to go in there for one reason, and that's to learn how to fight. But that's not what it's about. It's about creating better citizens and teaching citizenship and um, just being a better person all around. So, you know, if you can and they will stay with that, they will be better people later on. I promise you that. Um, okay, so getting back to the question my son was just saying. Sorry. Pardon? No, I, was, I had this iPad in my face. So sorry. Um, so how do I keep my stuff sharp? Well, if you are lucky enough to have a nice neighbor like mine who is a blacksmith, uh, but no, I do have a stone that I will work, uh, to try to maintain my blades. But if one gets really bad, then I run up there because he's actually got, you know, the means to reshape and, and do a lot of things, uh, with my, uh, steel and if I need it done, you know, he's more than happy to do that. So, um, you know, that's, that's one of the benefits about having such a great neighbor. And I'll tell you, if you've not go, went and watched those videos where he made the knives for us and he made that little axe, that was last year. Go back and look for that thumbnail. I mean, this guy, he's really good. And, you know, he's done all the work on my tractor, all of the different um, additions. <laughs> when I would have this wild idea he'd say well i believe we could make that happen and so you know and then then you've seen the result of the things that we were able to do with that tractor he told me one time he says um uh, he said i wonder what kubota would think if they saw that tractor but uh anyway yeah i mean it, it does suit my needs though you know so anytime i have something that i'm lacking i think you know well how can i integrate this here or there so um, I'm lucky to have him up there. So, what other questions we have, Patrick? Um, Boondock asked, uh, when's Jennifer going to come up and do some more cooking? Okay, uh, hang on to the cooking idea, and then one guy was wanting to know about the sawmills, so let's keep those in mind. Um, well, I've had some comments recently, guys, and you know, a lot of the comments, I look at them, and whether they're positive or negative, and I just keep moving forward. I know that you're always going to have both. Um, some people are unsubscribing because I'm doing more cooking now and planting my gardens, which is fine. You know, people have to eat, right? So I'm going to continue to do that because I know some people like to watch the cooking. It's not a total cooking uh, video. So what I may do is, you know, I don't want to fill up a video with 10 or 15 minutes uh, with cooking. So I'll just show some segments of it, you know, and we'll move on because sometimes we can also share good recipes. Um, anyway, uh, Jennifer, you know, she's offered to come up there. Uh, but you know, I've just had other things going on. So we'll get her back up there to do some more cooking. And I think what she's we're going to do, she's on the chat. Oh, is she? Yeah. What, what we're going to do is we're going to, you know, integrate her into one of the videos and I think also guys I'm going to on Wednesday's videos um, that contractors corner I think I'm going to integrate those into basically three videos a week where I'm actually working and I will stop and answer a question you know here and there just like I did today I was actually filming a Wednesday video but yet I was up there working I was uh, milling lumber and doing different things and so it won't be like a talk show because I've had new people sign on and they see that and they think oh my goodness this is a talk show right so I think I can be more productive just by integrating some of this stuff in with a regular video and that way you can still you know get questions and answers and we can still be being productive where I'm not just doing um, you know just a straight question and answer session so i hope that's okay with you guys because um you know i feel like it would be more productive 
So the oh. sawmill, wait a minute, wait a minute. The sawmill, um, I had considered the uh, wood miser because the other home that I built, um, I had a friend who had a wood miser and uh, it worked out really well. The only thing was it was a little more on the expensive side. I had looked at some others. I had looked at Woodland Mills. Um, and when I got to Norwood, I somewhere I found a video and I started checking in. It's a family-oriented business up in Canada. Really good reviews. I watched the HD36, and that's the one that I really wanted. But it was going to cost me about $3,500 more to get just the basic and um, I thought, well, you know what? I don't think I'm going to be cutting more than a 30-inch log. And the LM29 will handle a 30-inch. And it was only $6,300 to get what I've got. Um, so, you know, I figured that, you know, in order to save money, because, you know, you don't want to just spend it frivolously, it would have been nice to have the other. But this one has honestly been the ticket for what I've been needing. I can extend the bunks. Actually, I saw a picture of a Norwood sawmill the other day that was 40 feet long. You keep adding the bunks, and I'm sure you do them all that way, but four foot at a time. So mine is actually able to cut up to 16 feet. Um, and I knew that when I built the cabin that my rafters were going to be right at 15 feet. And I really wouldn't need anything larger than that. But if I did need to, all I had to do is knock out that one wall on the end of the sawmill and uh, start adding some more, you know, and I could cut a much longer log. So um, I was happy with the, with the results and, and the views, you know, on that Norwood. So honestly, I would recommend it. How about you, Patrick? You've been around the sawmill a lot. What do you think? What do I think about what? I'm sitting here reading questions. <laughs> We're talking about the sawmill. I said, you've been around it. What do you think about the Norwood sawmill? Oh, I love it. Yeah, we've uh, we've done a whole lot with it. I remember when we put the thing together, they, they gave us about 15 boxes. It must have been 10,000 pieces. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty sturdy little machine. And, uh, yeah, it keeps on ticking. Of course, you got to maintain it, of course, but. I, I recently got uh, some new blade guides. You'll see that in an upcoming video. Um, it's about $300, but uh, they're doing a much better job than those rollers that I had. Are you going to put anything in place of the plastic? Yeah, that was just something, guys, since I don't have power up there, that was just something for me to um, put up that would kind of keep some of the heat in in the winter time and it would also allow daylight to come through where i could continue to mill in there because i knew that if i built some wooden doors and shut them <laughs> it would be dark in there and i wouldn't be able to see anything so i'm still working up there without any power without any water i carry my water up there and uh you know it hasn't been a problem so you know that's kind of where i'm at with that so um, somebody asked earlier, I think it w was Laura, maybe, uh, forgive me if I'm wrong. Um, she asked, are we going to be planning on doing more? Hey, or... Simon. We're going to be doing what? Are we going to be doing, uh, live streams regularly? Um, I don't know. Start giving us a thumbs up if you like doing this live stream. I can't see him, but my son can. So if you guys want more live stream, start sending some thumbs up here in the next five minutes, and um, we may try to do that again. But we're going, Patrick. We got to get this technical difficulty worked out because this is an older iPad, folks, and this is heavy. <laughs> anyway, but um, yeah, we can we can do the we can do the live streams more if you guys like that. <laughs> That's not a problem. You know, another thing too, guys, um, I've noticed that people, you know, I've done the hikes and stuff like that, but people don't seem to like that. Uh, we've done some camp outs and things like that, but people don't seem to like that. They, they want to see me swinging a hammer. And, um, you know, <laughs> I don't mind doing that because I got a lot of projects. Honestly, you know, I've got this cabin, we got that uh, outdoor kitchen. I got a barn I'm going to do. I've got that uh, permanent base camp down there that 
uh, we're going to do. And I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's going to take me a few years to do that. And then I got to thinking that, you know, if people really like that kind of stuff, then why don't we start building some one room structures from back in the day, you know, from all around the world, uh, that, uh, people, you know, and different cultures built, you know, we can build them down there. I can line them up down there. I, Hey, hey I might even rent them out as Airbnbs down there. I just line them up on both sides of that hollow down there. And, uh, Oh, Hey, yeah. Well, I'm thinking about it. Um, what about the workshops? You guys interested in the workshops? I might have enough time to do maybe three of them uh, during this summer because what I would actually have to do is go in and work some comp time in order to uh, be off when you all were here. What we could do is we could set up camp and, um, you know, we could stay over. That way, in the afternoon, we could sit around, we could chat, we could you know, cook over the fire and, and have a good time. And then the next day, get up and share skills and stuff like that. But, you know, I think that would be a lot of fun. And, you know, uh, you guys, you know, unless you're camera shy, you would be in the videos. Um, it's interesting to see. This is your channel and you should do. Well, I do. But I also know that, um, you know, you have to bring the viewers what they want. So if I started off on a tangent and people got tired of it, you know, I could do it all the time and I would please myself, but I don't mind doing these other things. You know, when we first started this channel, we kind of envisioned, you know, filming this process. And our main goal was that base camp down there for people to share, you know, outdoor skills or any kind of art and craft. And we were going to load that up and put it on YouTube. But as this thing has evolved, you know, what I have found is you guys are digging the cabin. Okay, that's for sure. Uh, those have been our biggest videos view-wise. View um, I think you're going to dig this outdoor forest kitchen because I'm actually leaving the posts curvy and all the knots on it. I'm not squaring them off like the timber frame, although I'm milling two sides. Um, but I want it to be more rustic. And um, so... You know, it's going to have a top on it. It's going to have a barbecue pit. It's going to have an earthen oven, just like the one down there in the hollow uh, is going to have. Uh, but it'll be up there closer to the to the cabin. That way, you know, when I'm just chilling out up there, I don't have to traipse off down in the hollow just to get to it. Um, but, you know, that's that's kind of my idea. You know, I don't mind doing a lot of this. I like doing many different things. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of stick to what the majority, because I think when you start out, Patrick, correct me if I'm wrong. When you start out with your videos, um, you are attracting a certain segment based on what you're putting out there. So what I was putting out primarily was building. So a lot of the people um, have signed up or subscribed to us because of the building. And when I start hiking and going hiking in the woods, you know, I got multiple comments, you know, when are you going to get back to, to doing this? Or when I would start cooking, you know, well, when are you going to get back to doing this? So, but anyway, um, what are you laughing at? I finally oh, got no, you. Because I know what you're talking about. Um, so earlier, way, way, way earlier in the beginning, Carl asked, I'm going back and forth trying to make sure I answer as many as I can because we we have a little bit left, but, um, Carl had asked, where did you learn how to timber frame? Carl, I didn't learn how to timber frame anywhere. Um, I've, I don't know. Some of that stuff just comes natural to me. Some of it's just kind of common sense. Um, I have built another home. Um, I remodeled a couple of homes. Um, I did a business one time. That was tough because the same thing doesn't apply commercial as it does residential. Uh, so there's a couple of things I had to go back and change. But um, hold on, pause, pause button. Huh? Jim, Jim Martin, can you hear me? Send send us your info on our website. Email us. We've been trying to figure out who's buying our stuff. 
so that we can stay in touch with you and then just give you like a thank you, you know, every once in a while. So now that we know that you were one of them, can you please send us your info? We won't bother you, won't bug you. We're not going to like send you like daily reminders and emails. But uh, uh, if you, yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. Okay, I forgot what I was saying. What was I saying, Patrick? You were talking about how you learned how to timber frame. Oh, how I learned how to timber frame. Um, I did watch a few videos because I'm always watching building and um, things like that on YouTube. I haven't had commercial television for about 10 years. And, you know, I, I, I have internet here and I dial in YouTube and I specifically am able to, like you guys, pick whatever you want to watch. So, you know, I am um, not a good carpenter. I don't think by any means there's, I, I see so many people do much better job. I know enough just to get by. And I, um, but, you know, I, I had some comments like on this timber frame, why didn't I use shoulder joints? Well, you'll see in a video coming up because I'm laying block underneath that bottom beam, you know, so... Even if I didn't have the post there, you would have a bottom sill plate, you know, that you would uh, lay down on top of some blocks. But see, I do have these posts. I do have that huge tenon in there. You know, all those, the smallest post is seven inches by seven inches. Plus, it's going to have that block wall under it. You know, that's plenty sufficient. So, um, a lot of that stuff, you know, I had um, kind of mix and match as far as the building the way I was doing it. And, um, I honestly, I, I will never do another timber frame cabin like that because they're a lot of work. If I'd have done a conventional home, I could have been under roof and probably, uh, doing the finishing touches by now. But, uh, you know, all that whittling out and everything, or even, you know, another cabin like the Lincoln log type cabin may have been easier. I don't know, but I always like a challenge. I took that challenge. I said, you know what? I'm going to build a timber frame, and that's exactly what I'm doing, and I'm going to see it through to the end. Um, but, you know, I know a few tricks, just enough to get by, but don't, you guys don't take my, my example for anything. You know, check into it, and uh, you probably can do a better job than I can. Uh, a couple questions. One person asked... Um I think it was boondock again they said uh, what do i have to do to get a saw cut logo like the intro uh you know i wish i was cool enough to make that i have a subscription to this um this uh this site called envato elements uh e-n-v-a-t-o elements and i pay like i think it's like 30 dollars a month for it and i also pay for the adobe creative cloud and uh i found a template that had that saw cut on it um and i just took the logo which by the way that smoky mountain outpost logo i made on my telephone um and i just put it in this template on adobe after effects and rendered it and it, literally that was the first try uh and i was like it looks pretty cool and i sent it to my dad and he started putting it at the beginning of all of our videos and um and so that's kind of how that came to be so uh, that that's just to say and the reason i'm answering that is because there's a lot of people who uh want to do things similar to how we're doing but in their own whether it's outdoor stuff or whether it's just you know, sitting at home talking about whatever it is you want to talk about. Um, if you want to start a YouTube channel, but you were like, I don't really know how, or I don't have the resources. I mean, I made the logo on my telephone and, uh, that, I mean, that was, that's how everything started. And then I, we sent it to a printing company and we just got some t-shirts made and then we started wearing the t-shirts and then people started asking for them. So, you never really know. You just try it and put it out there. And then I saw some other comments in here about um, Sean James. Uh, yeah, that's a massive influence of this channel as well as my dad. This, a lot of this started because he just enjoyed sitting around watching a lot of people on YouTube. One of them was Sean James. We were already going to be building 
the uh, the cabin, and then we were like, well, he seems to be, you know, enjoying, you know, uh, people seem to be enjoying his channel, and he seems to be enjoying the process. Why don't we just get a camera and start filming what we're about to do? And so we had already, he had already been working on the property, getting uh, the place cleared out, and, you know, we had... Um, I had come up and helped build the sawmill, and so before we started everything, uh, we looked into getting a camera, and the rest is history, and you guys have been a part of it the whole way, some of you. And so, um, yeah, Sean James was definitely a massive influence, uh, which you can probably tell there's a lot of... uh, you know, a lot of similarities as far as like the content, but also having an outdoor kitchen and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, you guys are spot on there. Um, let's see if I can find another question. You know, you know, what's, what's so funny is we, we got that camera and we started, we had no idea what we're doing and we still don't, but we are learning a little bit. And, um, you know, he and I, we go at it all the time and we talk about it. We disagree all the time and <laughs> we, we, we argue and, but we always come to a conclusion and, um, you know, I'll tell you, it, it's a lot of fun. I, I go out there and I really try hard to bring you guys good content. I know I may not always do that, but, um, I try really hard. Patrick helps me so much with the thumbnails and titles and um, pictures. He does all the posting on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. And, um, you know, if it wasn't for him, honestly, and and I am uh, technically stupid as far as the computers go, okay? There's a lot of pieces of machinery that I could teach him how to operate, um, but... If it wasn't for him, you know, a lot of this stuff, just like right now, I had my computer up. Why will the phone do a live stream, but the computer won't? I have no idea. So I said, okay, Patrick, we got to do something else because we had a couple of people, excuse me, waiting out there already texting in and I couldn't get the camera to work. It, the, the, it wouldn't work on the, the computer. So, you know, we're doing this off my telephone and then we're doing it off of an iPad. So, good hey, thing. whatever works, right? Right. Good thing I had uh, this old iPad that I hardly ever use. This was an iPad 2, I think. And it's heavy. Um, and, you know, then my phone, which is sitting there, you know, propped up against my computer. So, I know that this might look a little retarded. But, you know, hey, we're making it happen, right? You do what you got to do. Um <laughs> Jennifer's telling my name. You know, I had some comments recently about introducing people. You know, my daughter, my son-in-law, my brother-in-law were introduced long ago. It's just not something that you think about. You know, everybody comes up there, um, you know, and before you start filming, you know, you get geared up. I tell them what I'm going to be doing. We start filming you know, we're all having a good time. And then, of course, I'll shut the camera off when they might say that they have to go or something like that. You know, Jennifer always gives me a hug and kiss before she leaves. And, you know, and then she takes off. Well, of course, you all don't see that. But, um, you know, I never think about introducing her every time she's up there on every video because, you know, that's something like I had already done before. But I got to remember that each time I'm looking at the camera, um, you know, it could be somebody new and they have not went back and checked out any of the other videos. So they don't know who anybody is. And, you know, that's, it's tough to remember everything. It's tough to please everybody. It's tough to try to, um, remember everything up, that you're doing. <laughs> yeah. No, Ricky, uh, Raspy Bob is in here. He, he won, uh, one of our giveaways. Yeah, yeah, he sure did. So, hey, glad to see you on here. Um, anyway, you know, just know that, um, you know, I'm human and I'm doing my best. And um, I will tell you that people are quick to give you their opinion and what they think. But um, I also have to remember that a lot of times they don't have all the information. They don't know, um, you know, what what may be going on behind the scenes. So everybody in, wants to know your name and they want to thank you for uh, being on the front line. 
My name is, is Richard Knox. Actually, my first name is Robert. Um, and, you know, I, it's just, you know, that's, that's what I do. And, you know, in, in a normal day, um, I will tell you this, guys, that our call volume has went down almost to nothing. Uh, it makes you wonder, where were all those sick people the last six weeks? Because we hadn't been running any calls other than taking people from the hospital back to the nursing home. Which, I mean, it may be worse in different areas, but in your area, yeah. Yeah, it may be. But, um, you know, I honestly, and from all the information that I gathered, um, I don't really see any big difference between this or any other respiratory-related disease um, that has been going on uh, that we have been dealing with for a long time. Because, you know, honestly, folks, if we'd have been checking each other, um, you know, and, and had tests out there for respiratory-related diseases, we'd been locked down 100 years ago. Um, um, somebody said, uh, flap, flap wheat uh, said, you guys come out with content so quickly. Uh, it's taken me a long time to watch the earlier videos. You know, let me say something about that. Um, now, my dad said earlier he is technologically... Um, uh, Stupid. Yes. Challenge. Uh, he's, not, he's not very smart, but you can he can do pretty much anything with a hammer, whether it's right or not the first time. <laughs> um, but... Uh, he, you know, I made him switch from a PC to a Mac, not for any particular reason. It's just his PC was broken, so I, we got a used Mac. And so for him to go from one to the other and learn a completely different operating system and then get a camera that he's not familiar with using and then learn how to film, and then not only that, but film himself. And then uh, he's a very... Uh, I wouldn't say he's, he's a very disciplined person in this, in the fact that he was like, I put out videos at the same time, every time, whenever I decide to put them out. So for instance, you guys see them Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays now, and they're always at the same time because he pre uploads everything. And so, um, you know, he's had to learn iMovie, which is a free software. It's another thing I wanted to point out earlier for people who were like, hey, how do you guys edit your videos? It's like, there's nothing complicated. It's iMovie, it's free, and he does everything. He's had to learn all that stuff. I forgot why it was bringing up that point. Uh, I, I got to look back here at something. Oh, you guys come out with content so quickly. And so um, a lot of that is actually um, my dad uh, trying to just be consistent. And so uh, uh, there's a lot of consistency problems that most people will have where they don't upload regularly. And so that becomes the normal for a lot of people. Whereas if you see somebody upload once every Friday or once every Monday, it's like you're, you start, you get so used to it. But since we've made it Monday, Wednesday and Friday, uh, you know, there's a lot you know, that he's having to do to put stuff out. And so, yeah, there's a lot of content coming out because we're trying to provide value. That was one of our goals when we first started was how can we provide more value to the end consumer um, in everything that we're doing? Can we make it educational? Can we make it uh, entertaining? Uh, you know, what, what can we make it funny or whatever? And so that's where a lot of this stuff came from. Sorry, I'm making you hold the iPad. Uh but, um, so, so yeah, so, um, well, I appreciate I, everybody who's watching. Yeah, I will tell you guys that, you know, I wanted to do, to do something different on YouTube. I just didn't want to make videos and, and entertainment, you know. I wanted to make something that, like I was talking about that bushcraft camp down there, uh, that would actually teach people life skills. You know, I believe we've got a whole generation of people that don't have a skill hardly at all as far as a life skill you know most of the kids today they can operate computers they can operate telephones they could operate all kinds of electronic equipment but you know you have kind of seen this what can happen when um you know in, in ems we study incident command when you have uh, disasters this was a disaster because nobody was actually prepared for it i kind of have my own opinion as to people pulling strings way up at the very top and kind of uh, directing things that have been the result of what you have seen lately. But at any rate, you know, you had places being shut down, you had uh, stuff that was being rationed out to you and so on and so forth. You know, I taught um, 
or I worked at a children's home when I was in nursing school for a couple of years. And those kids that came out of the inner city, you know, they didn't even know how to plant a garden. So I had a garden uh, uh, tilled up and we went to the co-op, we got plants and I showed them how to do that. And they actually kind of, uh, some of them took ownership of that. And they were so proud when those vegetables started coming in. You know, to be able to go out there and make your own water, to make your own fuel, you know, like cutting and use firewood, to be able to build your own home, to be able to, um, you know, do whatever you need to do in the woods to survive, you know, how many people could actually do that? We would probably have a lot of people that would end up, you know, if, if worse came to worse, and especially if, you know, something like this had led into something even, you know, worse than what it was, you know, there would have been a lot of people that wouldn't have had the first clue. So um, my point is that, you know, we wanted to be able to teach life skills um, and share arts and crafts with people and film it out there and put it up on YouTube. But then, um, you know, it kind of evolved from one thing to another. And, you know, I'm just, you know, we're doing the best that we can to try to bring you guys, you know, not only stuff that you might learn from, because uh, I've got a lot of things planned. I'm just trouble is trying to get people to commit to doing it. Um, but also, you know, to hopefully kind of entertain you. That's the reason I've been kind of uh, recently leaving some of those bloopers in there. So, and if I could ever, my cousin, my cousin's on here, and if I could ever get him out there, I've whistled at him a time or two back on YouTube. I don't know if he got it, but um, he. Uh, He's a pretty busy guy, too, but if I can ever get him out there, um, he and I used to be a couple of wing dingers back in the day, but we've done a lot of things together, so, you know, hopefully I can get him out there and share some more at some point. Um, uh, somebody asked if we, if we only use a GoPro. Um, no, we, I've got a Canon 80D that I use. It's got a Rode mic on it. I've got the GoPro that I set up on the side. It gives me my wider angle. And I try to shoot where you can't see the other one. Sometimes I mess up and you get both of them in there. But um, we're also thinking about getting a third camera because, honestly, we've learned that, you know, uh, five, six, second, eight shots, you know, um, from different angles makes the video more dynamic. And, you know, we're learning so much, guys, from this. I just laugh at taking back a, a look at some of the first videos. I'm not even saying that the ones we're doing now are great. But when we look at the beginning, we just, we laugh because it's like, you know, this is a total learning process, just like the building. And, um, but we're thinking about adding a third camera where that can give me another angle to where I can constantly be moving, you know, from uh, angle to angle to make it more dynamic and uh, to make it more entertaining for you guys. So that's what we use. I use a uh, Mavic Pro drone. Um, don't use it all the time, but... Um, I'm, I'm kind of afraid to fly it way off, especially in the woods, you know, that it might crash because those things, they're, they're like $1,100. Um, and I'm also afraid to send it up on a very windy day because I don't want to have to go and try to purchase another one. You know, I laid out about $3,000 when we first started this. You don't have to do that. You could use an iPhone. Some of the shots that are in those videos, hey guys, from, from the UK... Um, some of the shots you see were done with an iPhone. An iPhone has an excellent camera on it and, and video uh, capabilities, but it's not something that I would want to shoot with all the time. Uh, so that's the reason that I have, you know, other cameras and, and things. So anyway, all right, Jim. Hey, have a great night. Um, Give us your info so we can hit you up. Anyway, thanks. Thank you, Jojo. Hey, Jojo, send us send us your info uh, on our website so that we can um, uh, keep in touch with you if you don't mind. Uh, we just want to say thank you from time to time, just for giving us some some support and love and, and everything. So, uh, thank you. Um. But guys, I don't want to drag on all night. I don't want to keep you guys here. I know that in some places it may be late. You need to get to bed. Other places you may be looking to go eat because you may be in California. Um, so anyway. Hold on, one more question. One more question. Okay. Somebody said if you shot mostly dialogue like this, 
which camera would you choose? I'll tell you, it, uh, it would be a, an 80D, uh, or uh, that's what we use, uh, any camera. The reason is, is because just the framing of it in general uh, is a lot better than the, the GoPro. The GoPro is significantly more wide angle, and so you get a lot more in the shot um, than, than necessary. You want your subject to be in the shot. So... Um, you know, for instance, like if we, if my dad was doing the intro to the, to the, I have, the, hmm? I was just answering this guy he says, if you watch Chris Harbor, actually Chris, uh, commented on one of my videos and we chit chatted back and forth a little bit. So yeah, I'm very familiar with Chris Harbor. Um, anyway, d just as far as camera stuff goes, I don't want to get too technical cause I'm, I'm, the, I'm the, I'm a nerd here, but, uh, you know, um, it, it just it's you want your whatever your subject is to be the attention uh, of the of the film. So since my dad would be the one speaking in the um, on the film, you don't want the cabin and the trees and all that kind of stuff to be the main focus and be larger than what he is, unless he has a point to make in the film. Then say, hey, look at this, guys. So the Canon eighty D is a lot better than that than the GoPro because you can kind of zoom in a little bit. Um, and you don't get as much in the front. Sorry. I hope that answers your question. Yes, TA Outdoors is the bomb. Yeah, I've been watching him ever since pretty much he first started. So, yeah, I watch TA all the time. I'm subscribed to him. I'm subscribed to Joe Robinette. I'm subscribed to um, Sean James. I am subscribed to uh, Scrambled O. Love that dude. I'm uh, subscribed to um, The Outsider up there in Canada, a uh, young man building a cabin up there, um, and a few others. You know, I'm kind of selective about who I watch, but, you know, they're putting out good stuff. I enjoy it. That's my form of entertainment. And, you know, every once in a while, they'll do something that I'll pick up on. I'll be like, hey, that's cool. I did not know that, you know. So, um yeah, I mean, you can learn a whole lot on YouTube. A whole lot. So. Thanks, Mike. All right. Um, you want to wrap it up? Yeah. Guys, we're going to wrap this up. <laughs> Tell you what let's do. Let's take uh, two more questions. We, we're lacking about eight minutes to, on to an hour. So that's I think that's long enough. We'll take two questions. <laughs> I'll try to answer those, and then we'll... We'll call it quits, okay, guys? So, if you got any... Hmm? Arnold wants to do a demo on our channel. What kind of demo? What are we doing? On how to make an alcohol stove. <laughs> yeah, we could do that. Um, hey, I will tell you, uh, guys, I have a moonshine still that I bought... Off of Popcorn Sutton. He's a legendary moonshiner. Now, if you don't know anything about Popcorn Sutton, you Google that, or not, don't Google it, but go to YouTube, put it in there, and you will find his video. Okay? I worked on his telephone when I was with AT&T, and I'm going to do a video on it. It's not a large moonshine still. It's a small one, but it does, it will work. You know, It's I, not in use. It's not in use. Yeah. <laughs> say that. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to say or er, tell the little story about how I got it. I was wanting to get oh, some wait. of. Hold on, moonshine still. You want to? Well, we'll show you. I was wanting to get uh, somebody from the Moonshiner series, you know, yeah. that are local around here. But I think that that would probably be a conflict of interest if I'm trying to put them on YouTube. But um, I do have it. It will actually go. It was in my other cabin that I built on my hearth. It will actually go in this new timber frame. But um, anyway, it's it's a pretty cool little piece of art, an artifact, you know. I don't drink, but, um, you know, I did buy it because of living in East Tennessee, and I thought it looked cool because I had a lot of antiques and stuff like that hanging on the outside of my house and set up on the inside, and that's just part of this uh, area. So um, I still have it, and um, I thought it would make a, a cool little video at one point. So anyway, any, any kind of other question? We got 
five minutes. Yeah, we got five minutes. And I've held you up on my shoulders this a whole entire time, Patrick. <laughs> hey, man. Uh, let's see. Hold on. I'm looking back through here. Uh... I... <laughs> oh, wood stove. Um, I'm honestly really thinking about putting in a stove kind of like my grandfather had. You know, I've been thinking about it. And, you know, I would have to do a massive footer for a chimney. And uh, check things out. Enjoy your videos. Uh, they're going by too fast, guys. I can't see them when I'm talking here. I'll read them to you. Um, oh, are you going to live permanently out at the outpost when the cabin is finished? Oh, absolutely. That's going to be my... That, that, that's why this started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's going to be my home. Um, and, you know, I, uh, I just wanted to film the process, you know, the out, the, um, base camp down there was going to be the addition to it, but it's kind of evolved from that to a lot of different things. And, you know, I'm having fun doing all, doing all of them. Somebody wanted to know when I was going to get back to this and that, you know, as far as the cabin goes, let me just say this, that whole homestead. I'm going to work on all of it. I may not just be working on the cabin right now and get it done and work on another thing, get it done. That whole homestead is, is my project. Okay. So I'll probably be skipping around, but yeah, the other thing to, to, to point out is not every video. Uh, most people would always like to see people that they enjoy watching for every video, to, for every video to be the video that they, uh, you know, are going to enjoy but not everybody enjoys just working without talking not everybody enjoys just talking with no working and not everybody enjoys to see cooking and so we tried to split it up to where we we're like okay we'll make monday and friday try to be a little bit more working and we'll make wednesday videos be a little bit more talking so that we can kind of try to split stuff up uh for the different groups of people who enjoy watching us but may want more of one or the other and so that's what we've tried to do so just in case you find yourself saying why do they keep putting talking videos out i don't like talking videos why do they keep putting out uh, videos of them not talking i don't like it when they don't speak to me uh we're trying to figure out like what works best and what kind of will uh quote make the masses happy so to speak uh all the while still trying to accomplish what we're trying to do because you know there's a lot of work that we that well he does most of the work that has to be done out there and you know just to get like a couple of shots where it's like walking from here to there he's got to walk with the, uh, you know uh, 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 a, a log in his hand stop turn around turn the camera and walk right back at you know he has to do everything twice just to get a shot and so he works really hard um, on on that kind of stuff uh, so uh, yeah, guys, if I wasn't filming this, I would have probably already had that cabin done because, you know, it takes me twice as long to do anything because of filming and also, um, you know, uh, I have run around from different things to different things to continue to bring content um, and, you know, I don't mind doing that. This this is the priority that I have set for myself, which is that whole homestead so that I could um, video it because I've had so much fun on YouTube um, putting this out there and it seems to be doing well. People are enjoying it. So, you know, that's what I'm going to continue to try to do. Last question. Yeah. Last question, guys. Are you ever going to drill a well? I will be drilling a well probably at some point. I feel like I got to sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh my goodness, I did sneeze. Um, but I'm not in any. I'm not in any hurry for it. So, you know, we'll get stuff as we get it, and that will be the the way it happens, um, guys. We are giving away. Um, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, guys, you know, 
we were going to give away three axes in March, right? Well, we only had two people contact us. Well, we are bound to determine that we're going to give away three axes. So what we're going to do um, is at the end of this live stream, we're going to try to pull this URL, if it will let us, and all the comments where you guys signed on to be part of this live stream, and we're going to try to pick a name in that random picker if it will pull the comments over and um, pull a winner out for that ax. If it will I'll, not... I'll put it on... I'll try to tag you if I can. Most of the time I can go to the comment section and tag you and write underneath that you won. Uh, a lot of times you'll see that we put the... Um, the person's name on Instagram and Facebook. That way you can um, see that you won. Uh, so please make sure to watch it there. If the random picker will not pick this video, then you will see uh, two drawings at the end of May when we do our drawing for May. But we're going to do another drawing. If this won't work, we'll do another drawing that same day, and it'll be on that film. Uh, so hopefully... You, you can comment and we'll be able to draw your name on that, that next video. But we're trying to get it to where these live streams are, are special to the people who show up and comment and, and interact with us. That way you guys can get something too. Um, thank you, Kevin. Hey, another thing too, guys. Honestly, I, I just seen a comment come up here. It wasn't long ago we shipped a shirt. A guy from England ordered one of our shirts, you know. Um, I actually... Um, that was our first order. I sent him two. And I told him, I said, I want you to give one of these away because you're the first order in England. We don't really care where you're from. If you win something, we're going to get that to you. You know, we want to give out value. We want to give out um, something that's meaningful. Uh, my grandfather built his business that way. And that's the reason that we're doing this. We are giving away because we want people to feel like that they have value when they tune in to one of these um, videos that we're producing. You know, whether or not they're, you know, we're trying to do our best at it. But at the same time, you know, we appreciate each and every one of you guys. And that's why we're doing the giveaways. You know, we don't have to. We, I don't know a whole lot of people on YouTube that's doing it. But the fact is that we're going to do it. We set that goal for ourselves to do it, and that's what we're doing. So if you're in Africa and you win, I'm going to send the axe to Africa. That's just the way it is. Now, if for some reason you don't comment on the video because you don't want your name entered, that's up to you. But, you know, we're not, you, we know this is worldwide, and we're not going to use that as an excuse to not send something to somebody, because I'm going to tell you something. As long as you do good, good's going to come back to you. So don't um, strangle, you know, the the gift horse, I guess you should stay. Or my the preacher used to say, you know, don't be choking out the spirit. Um, so the I, thing I want to say is there's a lot of, you know, I've seen a lot of people give stuff away and be, be part of live streams and stuff like that. Uh, don't think that when we say we're giving stuff away, that oh it'll never be me or this isn't real anyway or whatever like this is real we're giving stuff away and it's not a t-shirt and so it's not always a hundred dollar item it's not always a, a five dollar item i mean sometimes it's this and that it's an axe it's a saw you know uh this coming uh well we're about to do the next video for this next giveaway so be sure and stay tuned for that um but it's stuff that we're like, what can we give them that's valuable, that they can use, that is not just a T-shirt, that's like, here's a branded item. It's like something that they could use that's within the same, uh, like, outdoor scope of thing, you know. And so that's kind of what this whole thing kind of started from. So um, this, is, this is for real. Enter your name and you might actually win. Um, and sometimes, you know, there's talks of giving more than one thing away. You know, like I said, just a, like a little while ago, what was it, a month or two ago, we gave away three axes. Um, you know, there's been talks of, of giving more than that away. So you just have to stay tuned in. It's not always one item. Uh, sometimes it's three of the same. Sometimes it might be uh, a bundle of stuff. Sometimes it might be like a gradual, like, you know, here's one item of this price category. Here's another one. And here's a grand prize. So you just got to kind of stay tuned in and uh, just see what happens. Um, yeah, we, we were talking, we were talking about coming up with something special when we hit. Thanks DP. 
30,000. So, uh, you know, we appreciate you all and that's our way of letting you know it. And, yes. and we don't, we're not looking for the cheap or easy way out either. You know, so that's the reason we didn't have to say anything about nobody calling in for that third X, you know, but they didn't. We said we were going to do that and we're going to do it, you know, because we know that if we don't stick to doing what we say that we're going to do, that's well, like what the, would we be? that's like the doing good and, and getting good back. That's going to come back and it's going to get you. So, you know, we're going to try to do what we say. And we said we'd give away three and we're going to anyway. We're rambling. All right. So we got uh, a nice first live stream. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, we'll try to do these more regular. Maybe we'll save all, all of our talking and question and answers for this kind of thing. That way um, <laughs> we can, uh, you know, make this a little bit more unique and special. Uh, and uh, the kind of, anyway. So uh, we didn't plan on an hour. We actually only really planned on about 30 minutes. And before we started all this, we were like, what are we going to talk about? Yeah. So you guys, we didn't even know what we were going to talk about. Yeah. You guys really helped this to be um, special and unique for all of us so that we could all kind of uh, hear what everybody was thinking and had to say and, and answer some of your questions that maybe would have answered a lot of your questions that you might have had. And so thank you for asking. Um, I'm going to check out Bunker Branding. Thank you. Um. <laughs> hey, hey, lips, hey, lips! You just keep rambling there. We're gonna have to let these Hold people. On. This guy said he, he won a Hershey bar when he listen, Boondock. Do me a favor. Send me your address to our website. I'm gonna send you something just because you said that. Okay. In, any anyway, guys, listen. We're gonna go ahead and cut this off right here. We appreciate each and every one of you from the bottom of our heart thank you for your time tonight um you know we can't send you enough love we can't send you enough uh, monthly giveaways for all the support you've given us on this channel i mean we we feel like that we have really you know done something by motivating enough people to watch you know what we're doing up there and now we're having such a good time doing it so it's like you know uh riding a bicycle with training wheels on it and you guys helped us along and now the training wheels have just been taken off we're learning to ride so hopefully you know we can do you guys a great job uh, do do you a good job like you do us so anyway each and every one of you have a great night. Uh, take care. Um, stay away from, um, you know, any respiratory related illnesses because it is springtime and in the fall time it's going to happen again. Um, especially if you're older because that's the majority of calls that I run. So, um, you know, be safe uh, that way. <laughs> anyway, what? Dusty said be safe. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and cut this off, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you back up at the outpost uh, on the next one, okay? Y'all have a good night. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye. You don't know how to get off of it, do you? <laughs>